In my last video, I broke down how hybridization connects to Vesper theory, helping us precisely figure out molecular geometries. I also showed how to figure out the geometries by counting electron domains. And electron domains are simply regions of electron density around a central atom. So they are either bonded atoms or lone pairs of electrons. In this video, however, I'll make it even simpler. While understanding the theory behind bonding and hybridization is important, you don't need to worry about all of that to determine the geometry of simple molecules. Instead, draw the Lewis structure and just count the number of electron domains and use the table I've provided to match the number to the geometry. So let's go through a few examples. Example one, methane. First, draw the Lewis structure. Carbon has four bonded atoms and no lone pairs. That gives us four electron domains, which corresponds to a tetrahedral geometry. Example two, water. Oxygen has two bonded atoms and two lone pairs. That's four electron domains. So we have four, but because two domains are lone pairs, the shape is bent. Example three, ozone. The central oxygen atom is bonded to two other oxygens with a resonant structure, meaning the bonding is delocalized rather than consisting of just a single bond and a double bond. This means there is an average bond order of 1.5 between the central and outer oxygen atoms. So in terms of electron domains, the central oxygen has about 3.5 domains at any time. So the V-shaped or bent geometries are both acceptable answers. But the most important thing is that we have a bent slash V-shaped molecule with a bond angle slightly less than 120 degrees. Example four, sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur has six bonded atoms and no lone pairs. This gives us six electron domains leading to an octahedral geometry. Example five, ethene. Each carbon in ethene is double bonded to the other carbon and has two single bonded hydrogens. Around each carbon, there are three electron domains resulting in a trigonal planar geometry. So that's about it for this video. I'll now provide some practice questions for comprehension. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching.